I don't know if this really qualifies or not, but I'm counting this as my first cookbook. Hi, it's been a minute since I've made any content and it's been kind of a tricky combination of low creative drive, some internal struggle, some imposter syndrome, and like a lot of things kind of culminating. And I just haven't been in the kitchen um, like at all at home recently. I've been really tired and really unmotivated to do anything. I've also just been feeling really isolated. Any person who is a creative or does anything with like making something, part of why you do what you love is because you love to share it. And when you have no one to share it with or you can't share it with anybody, it does kind of make you not want to do the thing. So back to my day job. So like I was saying, some of you guys know that um, I do recipe development for publications. We're in winter right now. It's June and we're in winter right now. So we're doing all of our holiday stuff and all of our um, holiday baking issues. And in doing this, it brought me back to some of my old family recipes kind of got the chance to revive some of those and honestly it was the most fun i've had in the kitchen in a very long time when feeling kind of isolated uh, making things that remind me of home really made me enjoy being in the kitchen again it got me thinking so my great grandmother is kind of one of the people who i credit for putting me into the kitchen in the first place. She passed when I was like nine or 10. She, you know, she was one of those lovely tiny women who always had something for you to eat when you came over. Um, and she was wonderful and I miss her every day. Her cookies, like her recipes are what we make for Christmas every year. So I was digging through her recipes for the story that I was working on for work. I have an idea for a project. I'm very excited about it. So most of my grandmother's, my great grandmother's recipes are handwritten. She, she was old and so some of it's not really super legible. It's also like an old type of German that not everybody knows. So my great aunt was so kind as to type everything out to make it legible. Um, unfortunately, I mean, if any of you guys have old family recipes, you probably know a lot of them are like missing baking temperatures or baking times, or it'll say like an egg in the ingredients, but then it doesn't tell you where to put the egg. So there's just like a lot of gaps. Years ago, they were not really thinking about writing any of this stuff down. A lot of these recipes were muscle memory for them. So my mother was kind enough to uh, scan all the recipes in both the printed versions and the handwritten versions. Um, and email them to me. I want to go through all of them, make all of them, add any information that's missing, like baking times and baking temperatures, update things maybe for, you know, U.S. uses. We can't find potash anymore. I don't even know if they still use it in Germany, but we definitely don't use it here. So I need to find a replacement for that. And I want to photograph everything, use my self-taught food photography skills, get pictures of everything, and I want to assemble it into a book so that we have the best versions of her recipes forever. And they're not just like on printer paper at my mom's house. This is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I just like haven't had the time or like the bandwidth to do something like this and right now i kind of need a project to just throw myself into i also wanted to film this because i thought that it would be kind of fun or useful to see my testing process obviously i'm not writing these recipes from scratch i'm just testing them but to see kind of what i'm looking for or how i gauge things or how i even test things in the first place to be able to share that with you guys and uh, I don't know, maybe you can do something like this at home. I do want to put this out here in the beginning of the video. This is not a recipe video. You will not be getting any recipes from this. This is my like personal family heirloom stuff. Maybe at the end, if there is one that I want to kind of like share and show you guys, I might do that. Give me a month and I'll decide. But as of right now, you're not getting any of these recipes. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys the testing process and how I shoot my photos and how I set everything up and kind of the start to finish of what recipe testing and development looks like. There are, I think, one, two, three, 
There's like 15 recipes-ish, give or take, here right now. Some of them I've made before, and I know exactly what they are. Some of them I've never made before. My mom does not know that I'm doing this. I might have to sneaky ask her, like, hey, what's the texture of this supposed to be like? <laughs> um, but for right now, I am going to transcribe all of these onto like a doc for myself so that I can easily look at what information that I'm missing and highlight that for myself. First, <laughs> first things first is just a lot of paperwork. I'm gonna be seeing my family this fall and again at Christmas time. I do wanna get this done before Christmas though because a lot of these are Christmas cookies. So if I can get this to like my sisters before then, then maybe they can make this stuff for Christmas. I want the book in my hands by the beginning of October, which means that I need to get all of the recipes written, edited, and photographed by mid-September. So that gives me exactly three months to do all of these, which I think is fine. Once I get my head around everything that's in here and what I need to do, I will come up with a game plan. This recipe has no instructions, it just says make the dough. It has no baking time, no baking temperature, and no yield. So I'm gonna have to fill all of that information in myself and just figure it out. Thanks, Oma. Appreciate it. Good morning. So, progress report. I finished, got all of the recipes typed up with questions or missing information highlighted. Because sometimes if I don't highlight it, I just kind of gloss over it and I forget that I need to like get the weight of something or the time of something. Made one comprehensive grocery list. I made myself a schedule. Because if I don't make myself a schedule, then this will all I will just kind of start doing things and I'll run out of time and I'll be really upset with me that I didn't make a schedule. It feels really far off, but also I know that the time is gonna fly, especially when I'm busy. So as long as I stick to this, um, I think I'll be fine. And I will check in with you guys once I have groceries and I start testing. I'm spending so much on butter alone. Okay, so um, I just got back from grocery shopping. A quick note about ingredients as it pertains to like development and testing and stuff. You wanna make sure that you're really consistent with the types of ingredients that you're using. It doesn't really matter what you're using, just so long as you're consistent with it. For example, butter. There's two different types of butter, or two main types of butter. There's European style butter and there's American style butter. American style butter has like a butter fat content of about 80%. Whereas European style butter has at least 83% typically. And I know the 3% maybe doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it does make a big difference. It's the difference between like your like generic butter being like almost stark white and the European butter being like super buttery yellow. I typically develop with all European style butter. It's all that I use in my baking at home. Um, and I know that's all that my family uses. So um, I'm gonna develop all these cookies with European style butter. Also another important one is flour. A lot of different flours, like even if it's all purpose flour, the protein content is different on, on different ones. I like to use King Arthur because they're very transparent about the type of grain. If it's, Is it like hard red or soft white? And the protein content, the transparency is just really nice across their flowers. But even all purpose from King Arthur to like gold medal to like Pillsbury or whatever, the protein contents are different. Personally, uh, I'm a firm believer that if the recipe that you've developed 
only works with one brand like if it only works if you use blue grub butter or if it only works if you use king arthur flour then maybe the recipe uh needs some tweaking and is not super stable i don't want you to think that you have to buy like super expensive ingredients to be able to bake that's not what i'm saying um obviously there's certain things that personally because this is important to me i will invest more in in certain ingredients i'm not saying that you have to shell out like so much money for different kinds of flours and butters and vanillas and whatever i just think that a general awareness of what kinds of ingredients you're using and how they interact and what's in the ingredients that you're using knowing that kind of stuff and knowing how to work with that kind of stuff is going to make you a better more intuitive baker if that makes sense that's my two cents on ingredients. I'm gonna put all this stuff away now. This lighting is crazy. Um, it is thundering like crazy outside um, and it might storm any minute. So let's test our first recipe. She literally just said to work it until a dough forms. I might have to pop this in the stand mixer or use a hand mixer or something. Oh my God, we're gonna be here forever. I literally have carpal tunnel in both of my hands. This is not going well for me. Look at all those European omas had massive forearms. Okay. I'm supposed to be able to roll this into a log. Obviously I cannot do that. This dough, I presume, is supposed to be short and crumbly, which is what gives it that like melt in the mouth, fall apart texture uh, when it bakes as a cookie. But I can't roll that into a log and follow the instructions as written. And I don't think I would even be able to like shape them individually into the little crescents that they're supposed to be. So there's two different things that I could do. I could either add like water or milk or some kind of liquid and it would bring together that way. Or since there's two egg yolks in this recipe, I could add one or two egg whites, which is probably what I'm gonna do. This is not really weird that this happened. I'm not surprised, especially with older recipes, like flour content is different. The size of the eggs might be different. There's like a lot of different things that could play here. So I'm gonna put this back into the bowl. I'm gonna add an egg white and mix it up and see how it feels. Like I feel, oh my gosh, that feels so much better. It was so crumbly before. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna chill that and I think that's gonna be perfect. Running into a bit of a problem. So <laughs> this is where we're at. This is the correct size from what I remember. This is the size they're supposed to be. Um, I did test, I didn't mess around with making some like larger ones, but from what I remember, this is the correct size. However, it makes over a hundred of these with how much dough we have. Pardon? I'm gonna have to scale the recipe down, obviously. I guess for Christmas, if you're giving them out, a hundred is great, but like, no one is gonna be standing here rolling out a hundred tiny little crescents. So I'm probably gonna like fully cut it in half, to be honest. I'm gonna call this first test a success. And then the next test will be with a different mixing method and scaled down ingredients. So I think this went very well for the first one. now and I was like I should probably start transcribing some of these notes over and I <laughs> waited too long and so now some of these uh, have notes on them that I don't know what they mean I don't I don't understand my notes anymore so <laughs> I'm gonna have to verify some stuff but I make them for photo good morning everyone so today is shoot day well like the first shoot day i'm starting to take pictures of everything now schedule pff, completely gone i'm like a month behind say hi guster the schedule is completely uh 
non-existent, which is fine. I am just gonna get done what I can get done. Just putting this out there right now. I am not a professional photographer. I am completely self-taught. I know a very, very small amount of photography. I know enough to get me by and I know enough to make my pictures look decent when I post them onto the site. And I know enough to make this book look pretty good for my family who will think that it's cool regardless. So this is where I shoot I'm extremely lucky that I have a window seat right in front of a window like this. I have one of my backdrops sitting here. This is a two by three backdrop and it is from Capture by Lucy. Um, they ship from the UK, but they're really, really good quality. This one specifically is Jade's Garden. I am gonna pop on an audiobook, grab my first round of cookies, and finally get started shooting these images. So yeah. to get an overhead shot because this, that's the best I can do right now. Here we are. Another day, another cookie. You know what I'm saying? With this one, I really wanted to try to get like an in process with like the final ones. So I'm gonna crop this out and the top of this out. So you'll really just get the center. But yeah, I think it, I think it looks really good, right? So I'm shooting the uh, German pancakes. And first of all, my confection sugar keeps dissolving. But I set this up to look kind of like an active dinner scene. Obviously this is not a table, so it's not really gonna look like someone's sitting here eating dinner. But a lot of like how you would eat this normally, like how we would all sit around the table and get together and eat this. And I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. Really good. Okay, so quick update. Um, it is September 13th. I got sick with COVID for the first time. <laughs> Just really incredible timing. I, I was already behind on getting all the images shot uh, and then I got sick uh, and really pissed off about the fact that I was sick. So now I have like roughly a week if not less than a week to get all the shots done. Five shots plus the cover and a couple of extra shots. So probably a total of like eight shots that I still wanna do. Um, I definitely was way too cavalier at the beginning of this. Of like, it's fine, I have time, I have so much time. And now I'm really paying for it. But almost everything is done. I did start assembling the book, I'll show you. So the website that I'm using is called Mixum, and this is not sponsored by any means. If they want to sponsor me, that'd be great. Basically, they'll just like, uh, I can upload everything and they'll print it into a book for me. And you can do it a couple of different ways, like if you want to upload individual pages and PDFs, but I'm not doing that. There's a little bit of a learning curve to figuring this website out and like how to organize everything but I think I got it. First, I'll take the picture, obviously. I'll load it into Lightroom because I do unfortunately pay for an Adobe suite. So I'll <laughs> edit it in Lightroom. So I'll edit it and then I'll upload it onto here. And basically what I've been doing, I've just been using templates that they gave me to then put it onto the book and then copy the recipe over. So you can see that I have a picture here and a recipe on the side just like you would a regular cookbook. So that's where I'm at. I need to do the table of contents still, that's this one. And like I said, I have five recipes that still need to be shot, including the one that I decided last night that I was doing. I feel really, I feel like I can get this done. I do feel like I can get this done. I feel like my problem is though, is that I'm gonna push through and get all this stuff done and then 
something's gonna happen and I'm still not, it's like not gonna get edited in time. That's where I'm at right now, that's the update. It's all going pretty well. It could be worse. So I'm gonna go make my list of stuff that I need to do. Your girl loves a checklist. Hopefully it's not Okay. Friends, it is the last day of shooting. I am starting to set up the cover. I wanted to go for like a cookie box, keep it like messy and cute. Again, you're looking at landscape, but I'm gonna shoot it portrait, so it'll kind of look like this. I put parchment paper on the bottom of that so that the cookies would sit up higher. Exactly three months later, I finally finished. I'm so tired of staring at my computer screen and I'm so happy to be done. I'm celebrating by eating chocolate mousse that I got from work. And I think I just barely made it. I think I will get this like two days before I need it. Um, the box just got here. It came much faster than I thought. It was gonna come. I wasn't expecting this until next week at the earliest, but it came very quickly. So I'm very happy about that. Oh my God, I'm literally so nervous. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so nervous. I know what this is gonna look like. I think I'm more nervous that the quality of it is gonna be bad and I paid all this money for pictures that didn't like turn out or something. I don't really know. God, it looks really good. I did like, this is not centered and that's gonna bother me for the rest of my life, but that's okay. Oh my God. The colors. The colors look really good. Oh my God. I was so nervous. Why are we being recorded? Shh. Don't worry about it. Like logistically, it did not work. I have to Yes. November. The first clip of this video was from back in June, I believe. It's been a long road working on this video. I wanted to take my time filming and editing this and I wanted to get all of the previous clips edited before I did this wrap up just so that I could address anything that I thought was missing or anything that I kind of wanted to talk about here. It's done.
this is the final product. I actually can't say enough about how happy I am um, about how this turned out. I'm thrilled. <laughs> there are a few editing mistakes and one misspelling working on this for so long that I'm kind of surprised there's not more. And also the misspelling is not, it, I just missed, I'm missing an umlaut, like those two little dots on one word. And my mom is the one who pointed it out to me. So that's embarrassing. I will leave the link to the website in the description of where I printed this from. This is not sponsored by Mixum at all. I think I found them on Instagram or TikTok. Like somebody else was using them for a different reason. I started working on it in June, I really dragged my feet and it wasn't until like August that I really kicked it into high gear and actually started testing and photographing everything. Um, so it did take me multiple months. There are a few things that I wish I could have fit in here that I didn't get the chance to because I was so tight on time, but it came in time. I was able to give it to everybody and I'm so, so happy. I'm also just really proud of myself because like, like that's a really good shot. Also, just to be completely transparent, I got five of these books and it cost me about $200. I did do this in hardcover. There are paperback and like spiral bound versions of this. And then also depending on how it's bound, if you do hardcover or what size you do or what color paper you do, um, how many pages there are. There's a lot of different things that kind of come into the price. Like, yeah, if you told me that this book was $40, I might have some questions for you, but I mean, it's personal. I got to pick everything that went in here, so I'm okay with that. One thing that I'm kind of embarrassed about, I made this table of contents. For some reason, I thought that the pages, like they would print the page numbers on here based on like where they were in the book. No. I had to manually add the page numbers, which I didn't realize. This table of contents is useless because there are no page numbers. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. It was kind of fun to do a little bit more of like a behind the scenes thing of like how I do things and why I do things and whatever. Making this book was very healing for me. I was in kind of a spot of like being really stuck and feeling unmotivated and uninspired and just not wanting to do anything or make anything and making this book really reminded me of like my roots and like also what got me started in culinary in the first place. So yeah, I hope that this is like an heirloom piece that they hold on to forever. Um, Cause I know I am, I put enough work in this that I will be holding on to this for the rest of my life. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this was interesting somewhat. I know this is kind of a departure from the videos that I typically make. I will probably still not be giving any of these recipes. These are very personal recipes from my family that I don't really wanna be putting out on the internet. I hope that's okay. I hope you guys understand. But if there is anything that you guys would like to see that maybe you saw in this book um, that you're like dying for a recipe for, let me know um, and I'll see what I can do. I can probably put together my own version of something that's in here for you guys that I'm comfortable sharing. That is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and comment down below what you thought of it. And let me know if there's anything else that you guys wanna see by the end of the year or coming into the new year. I hope you are all happy and safe wherever you are in the world. I'm sending love and light, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.